it's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke Zero Sugar has real Coke taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Try one today. And by SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. And now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. Today we talk Florida State basketball, a couple of games, one on the road, one at home at Notre Dame and Clemson, our permanent partner coming to Tallahassee. Highlights of those games on today's show, and we'll also talk a little bit about the fight for literacy. And Coach, what a tremendous come-from-behind win over Clemson on Wednesday night. I was very proud of our players. I thought that we really, really, after halftime, really was focused, and we had more energy, we played, uh, we got more deflections, we were energized defensively, and we were on point, we were talking and pointing. Pointing and talking, we, we had that uh, that eye the, uh, that we really wanted to win the game, and I thought our guys were connected uh, from the bench to all the way to the floor. Defense led to offense. We got what a 17 to two run, and it paid a huge dividend. We took it. We didn't lead until overtime, coach. Well, there's no doubt that that was a very tough game. Clemson's a very good basketball team. They're they're connected. They've had a great season, and that was an important victory. And hopefully, our guys will will feel that this. That's the, the way we got to get back to playing on a consistent basis. Highlights of Florida State's game against Notre Dame and South Bend, Indiana, and of course, that thrilling overtime win over the Clemson Tigers on the Bay Coast. Stay with Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We promised you highlights, and uh, boy, a chilly, chilly South Bend, Indiana, away to the Florida State Seminoles. Coach, I have never seen as much snow as we saw in South Bend. And <laughs> Fred Forrest has got the park on, the cap on, and that wouldn't even keep you warm, would it? <laughs> well, yeah, that's a nice picture. <laughs> Knowles in the black uniforms and uh, Purcell Pavilion. This is a tough venue to go in and win. Nice shooting touch by Philip Cooper, his 16th consecutive game with a Bay three-point shot. Well, there's no doubt that we needed them, and we wish we needed a few more of them. We, it was one of those games where they shot exceptionally well, and it seemed as though we was cold from our shooting as, as they were, as it was from the, uh, from uh, the snow and the, and the cold weather in South Bend. Uh, we, they played an exceptionally good game. Uh, I think we're once again, in the ACC, if you don't, if you're not at your very, very best in the ACC, something bad's gonna happen to you, especially when you're on the road. MJ Walker with a nice jump shot, the assist from Terrence Mann. Coach, we needed more of those plays. No doubt about that. Uh, I, I thought they were connected, they executed. We couldn't generate enough defensive uh, opportunities, uh, stops, and, and deflections to, so that we could get uh, some easy baskets out of our defense. But uh, I think we learned a lot about ourselves. Uh, we learned life on the road in the ACC. If you're not really exceptionally uh, involved and, and committed, uh, it's going to be difficult to win. And I thought West, uh, Notre Dame just had a lot better focus and they executed so much better than we did. Chris Kamaji with a nice tip in off a miss by Trey Foster. See, see number five on the court there. Just made a jump shot a little earlier in the highlights. That's uh, P.J. Savoy. Welcome back, P.J. Well, there's no doubt that we, we were his, his 11 points in this game, they were huge because we we were a little sluggish, and he came down and knocked a couple threes and got us to the basket. He just did a wonderful job for us. Welcome back. He had 11 points in his return. He had missed seven ball games with a knee injury, suffered in the uh, Syracuse game. And Chris Kamaji, a uh, uh, power in the paint, uh, getting an offensive tip and a nice little basket there. We haven't had the right balance with him. Uh, we, we need to get him more of those kinds of shots. Uh, we we got to get a, a little bit better balance of attacking the basket and also getting the inside opportunities. Uh, we got to include that a little bit more. We didn't get enough of that in this game. Phil Cooper, not just a jump shooter, he can attack the, the basket, a little five foot floater there. And the Seminoles hang around at halftime, coach, but in the second half, we go cold. Notre Dame takes advantage of that home court advantage, and they uh, get a big number on us. Well, I think it was a two point game there late with about um, with seven, eight minutes to go in, in the game, and somehow or another, we, we, we just could not muster uh, the ability to, to finish the game. Well, that uh, guy wearing number five in white had a lot to do with a career game for Matt Farrell, and we blocked one shot, but we didn't block enough of his shots. Nice drive to the basket by CJ. He had a, a tremendous five minutes late in the game. Well, no doubt about that. We, we just got to find a way to get everybody hitting on all cylinders in, 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 in the same time. CJ Walker with uh, a, a, a three made three-point shots toward the end. Phil Cooper gets harmed on that one, gets a chance at a three-point play. And Coach, it's a five-point ball game four minutes into the second half. There's no doubt that we were we were close, but we somehow or another we hit a cold, a cold spot there. 
and it just didn't allow us to, to finish the game. How high could Fiondu Cavagnelli get up in the air? That was a great block. Well, that was a great block, great time and aggressiveness. He's shown flashes this year of, of, of being an outstanding potential. Uh, there's no doubt that he, is, he has a chance to develop into a good player. And as a freshman who hasn't played a whole lot of basketball, you, you know that his best basketball is ahead of him. Trent Forrest had a good week for us, didn't he? No doubt, and here we are. We're right there and right on the road when you fold a five-point game 10 minutes into the, to the, the, the second half. You feel pretty confident that you're going to have an opportunity to win the game. There's Trent again. Nice move, pivot, and lays it up off the window. Is fouled, and uh, six points, four rebounds, four assists uh, in his work at uh, the Purcell Pavilion. Also had a big night stealing the basketball. Had three steals in the game. Well, here we are. We're 49-52, 10 minutes to go. Uh, I think we might even tie the game here somewhere close. It's 51. Uh, it's, a, it's a tie game and with five minutes, with, with, with eight minutes to go, and that's where we went cold and they got hot. They got red hot, and uh, we mentioned Matt Farrell, 28 points in the game. He had 14 first half points, 14 in the second half, and they really knocked down three point shots on our defense. Matt, Matt is just throwing them in from the parking lot. As a matter of fact, a couple of shots that he made. I'm not really sure we could we could let our guy shoot, but he was he had the hot hand and in college in the ACC you always gonna have guys on each team that are capable of doing that. Not only can he shoot, but he handles the ball, runs the offense, and he makes free throws, and it all added up to a win by the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in South Bend, Indiana. Coach, we uh, gave it a fight at half, and uh, just uh, they got red hot when they needed to. Well, we came up a little short in this game, no doubt about that. Uh, now we had to move on to the next game. Florida State uh, at Purcell Pavilion. There's something about the snow up there in that part of the country. Oh, by the way, Coach, uh, we had to spend an extra day up there in that snow. Did you take suntan? I mean, it, it was, what, 21 degrees, I think, Sunday that was going down in South Bend, Indiana. Up next, Coach, you wore a, a lime green tie in the North Carolina game, and uh, it was uh, Coach's Fight for Literacy. And uh, they're going to have a feature on that now. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing to, to encourage literacy among youth. Well, most of us, most of the college coaches uh, have committed themselves to making uh, the, the states and everybody aware that uh, we need to place more emphasis on education, uh, helping our youth uh, to prepare themselves for their future. And it's a nice movement, and, and we're all in. We'll join the fight for literacy after these messages. Literacy, defined as the ability to read and write. It seems simple. However, it's estimated that nearly two-thirds of American fourth graders are reading below their grade level. It's a cause bigger than just one person, and the coalition, Coaching for Literacy, strives to demonstrate that winning doesn't only apply to a game, a fact that the Florida State men's basketball team understands very well. Coaching for Literacy is just like a way for us to go to the kids and tell them that how much reading is important, how much it impacts lives. It's always important to be respectful to your elders. Coaching for Literacy not only empowers young kids, but also coaches and athletes around the country. Partnering with prominent programs, the coalition's mission is to spread awareness about illiteracy and support local reading programs. It was just a good experience, you know, giving back to kids that may not have that role model or that I don't look up to. So us coming in and reading to them kind of makes them feel good and make their day. But it isn't just players and students who benefit from the experience. Associate Head Coach Stan Jones remains at the forefront of this effort for FSU. Coaching for Literacy is a cause that I was very excited to get behind when it was brought to me a couple of years ago uh, because reading always been very important to me. A cause so important to Jones that he was named to the Coaching for Literacy Coaches Council. Yeah, as I've gone through my education and working and coaching and in educational institutions my whole career, it's become very important to me to see if we can find and make a difference. And I think this group is certainly is on the right path of helping a lot of young people down the line. Going and be like an example for one of the little kids. Like you never know what people is going through and what they look up to. And seeing a basketball player from Florida State, seeing where he come from, and see where he have done in his life. It may be inspired one of the little kids. That's the idea, at least one. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, 61% of fourth graders in Florida are not proficient in reading. And the Seminoles are doing their part to change those statistics. Growing up, I wish we had a, somebody pushing this big because 
reading for me was hard. And I struggled, I had to take extra classes and just so I can be up there and not be laughed at by friends. I played for Florida State. We got a game tonight, y'all should come. To further emphasize the importance of literacy, the Seminoles hosted their third annual Fight for Literacy game against UNC in January. With coaches donning bright lime green ties, their purpose was clear. Something unique and different that stands out, that lets people know that there's something that they're, they're representing to make people ask questions. The power to know how to read and write is priceless, and so are the memories made for not only the players, but for the kids. The smiles on kids' faces when you walk in, <laughs> It's big, it's, it tells you that it's more than basketball. It's being a role model to the little kids and showing them that they can make it. We're always being on, on have little eyes watching us, and so when you take that as a responsibility, you do your best to try to seize that responsibility and, and, uh, and try to brighten the kid's mind so he'll be inspired to do something great in his own life as he grows older. You, know, you can't put a Band-Aid on it, you gotta try to give something that, that gives a lifetime cure, so hopefully that's our biggest impact. My dream is to be like a dancer. As for coaching for literacy in FSU basketball, they continue to be the biggest game changer as they team up to assist in giving kids their best shot in the biggest game of all, life. Here's Forrest on the drive, ties the game with eight seconds left. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We have plenty of highlights to go, and uh, Coach, we're going to take on the Clemson. This is a perimeter party. We play these guys twice every year, and we've had success lately. We've won three in a row. They're madder than Hornets. They're the second-place team in the conference. They bring their A game to our soccer center. Clemson's a very, very good basketball team. I, I enjoy watching them until we have to start playing them. <laughs> but they're doing a very good job of executing, and uh, they really, really hit the threes in the first half. They, I think they might have hit 10 threes on us once again. Uh, they executed, they moved the ball. Uh, they just, they really, really challenged everything that we have on our defensive game plan uh, to make sure that we uh, were, were able to pull the victory out. We were down 15 points and Terrence Mann made that nice triple from the deep corner. We knocked that thing down to a 23-11 deficit and uh, we're challenging the Clemson defense, attacking the basket. Once again, Terrence has been a guy who finds a way to get to the, get to the basket. He's uh, uh, has, has that knack for being able to hang in the air, draw the foul, and finish the basket. Florida State playing from behind almost the entire ball game, and a uh, guy that's going to make some big baskets down the stretch with a nice left-handed layup. Trent Forrest had a career night for Florida State. No, no doubt that Trent, Trent is, uh, is really, really playing within himself, and uh, he's an unselfish player. He, uh, he's a pass-first guy, even though he scored 3,000 points in in, in high school, he's a guy who does seem to enjoy doing all the dirty work, the little things to give you a chance to win. And you can't say enough about that type of character and attitude. The level of confidence he has, though, that he'll step up and make plays when the game's on the line. Well, the play by Trent Savoy, we got an easy basket, Trent Forrest with two in a row now. And how about the big fella? That's a nice baby hook. He's developed a great shot. Yeah, but we have to get more, get him a little bit more involved. And uh, I've been very disappointed in our inability to get the right balance for inside outside attack. At halftime, we're down a dozen, and uh, Clemson's going to pour it on again. They're going to build an 18 point lead. And all of a sudden, coach, we kick it into gear, and defense leads to offense. We go on a nice run. There's no doubt that the fact that we were able to. Uh, create some indecision on their part, get us some, get some turnovers, some deflections, and give us a chance to go out and, and pull this game out was very important. So yeah, Ike uh, started the second half, and boy, his presence inside early on uh, kept them at bay, uh, big time block. Uh, it really, really, I was pleased to see him step up and respond uh, the way he did. Gave us a big energy lift. Another steal by the Knowles. Coach, we had nine steals. That led to a layup by C.J. Walker. We're hanging around. We're down nine now, and another takeaway at midcourt. This is our energy. Uh, uh, we were contesting every shot, every pass. Uh, I was glad to see our guys energized that way. Uh, Gabe DeVoe, who was the ACC Player of the Week last week, and another Aaron Pass, a steal by Brian Angola. And uh, that's how you get out of slump. You get a steal, you get a stuff. You know? Well, there's no matter. They, look, they kind of like the boom squad from, from last year uh, came, showed up the second half. You're right. They're, they're, watch it again. Here's the knockaway and go. You've said before that, that Brian Angola may be the best on ball defender we have on our team. Well, there's no doubt that he's very capable. But he came in the second half and gave us about 
six or seven uh, big time points. We needed every one of them in overtime victory against Clemson. Finished with 10 points, finally back to double figures in 23 minutes of work, and the Seminoles again playing good defense in the paint. P.J. Savoy, this is what he does, isn't it, Coach? Well, there's no doubt that he was not shooting the ball as well as we know he's capable of, but he was very patient, took his time, got, his, got balanced, and came with a big basket. And Phil Kofor underneath with another assist by Terrence Mann. He's that stat stuffer, isn't he? He does everything. Well, because we, you know, we had to go small to be more aggressive, to press and trap a little bit, we didn't play our big guys nearly as much. And so we had, we had uh, Phil playing our center position, and, he came through big for us. I was going to say, was that the change at halftime that you made, Coach, because he had zero points in the first half, 17 huge points in the second half at overtime? Well, what we did, uh, we, we started a, a more of a defensive unit the second half, and uh, guys who I thought would give us some energy, and he was one of them. As a, to, to, I can't say enough about that shot. That <laughs> Bill Kofi just put us on his shoulders and made sure that we we had we had a, we won the game. So here's another steal, one of nine steals in the game. Brian Angola again. He's going to take it all the way down and finds a teammate for a nice little. Four. <laughs> How about that shot by Terrence Mann? Well, we were definitely connected during that part. There's no doubt about that. And I was very pleased to see. I said, that's a huge play right there. Huge play. Huge play. That he was able to steal the ball and have the presence of mind to call timeout. He got the official to see that timeout call. Now we're down two points, Coach. We have not led in this game. There's been one tie, and look at that shot. <laughs> How in the world did you make that one? To tie the ball game. And there's no doubt that he's, he's been a guy we felt very comfortable uh, with his ability to finish that basket. Eight seconds left with that layup by Trent Forrest, and the shot goes awry for Clemson. We go to over. This is our third overtime game at the Tucker Center this year, Coach. <laughs> well, that's a big shot right here. I tell you, I'm... That was a confidence boost. That should be a confidence boost, if, if anything. That just says a lot about CJ and his ability to understand that that uh, in the moment I have to make a play, and he stepped up and made one for us. I call this a whirling dervish play, Coach. I don't know how you make that move and still maintain balance to make the layup. But Trent Forrest, huge. He scored six of our 11 points in overtime. It's a big time uh, defensive possession there where we got the, the five second call. Coach, we finally have a lead in this ball game, and we're going to build it to a four-point lead. Clemson keeps hanging around, Coach. I never thought the final 30 seconds was going to get over. I bet you've done either. <laughs> There's a nice way up, and the Seminoles now build to that advantage, and we're up four points. Time running out. We got a huge block from Trent Ford. He did it at both ends of the court, didn't he? Career night. Unfortunately, the young man uh, uh, got injured, I think, on that play, and uh, we want to wish him well. Shelton Mitchell, he spent uh, Wednesday night in Tallahassee at the hospital, so hopefully Shelton is able to recover and get back into action. The Clemson Tigers come to Tallahassee. We went for the fourth time in a row. Coach, it is our fourth win over a ranked team. Clemson was number 11 in the country. Well, they're a good basketball team, and it's easy to see why they've been ranked so high all year long. Uh, they have been uh, tremendous with every part of the game. They've been a great defensive team. They shoot free throws very well. Uh, they uh, shoot the three very well, and they've they don't play as much of a pack line defensive system as Virginia, but their defense has been outstanding, and they don't turn the ball over. So it was a, it was a game where we really had to be aggressive in order to force them in the turnovers and make them a little uncomfortable on the offensive end. A nice Valentine's treat for some of old fans, an overtime thriller at the Tucker Center. FSU prevails 81 to 79. Coach. Congratulations, officially win number 300 at Florida State, career victory number 500, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Great milestone for Florida State basketball. Up next, we look ahead to another week in the ACC. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. Uh, Coach, uh, it's amazing. We started back in November, and here we are in February, and we only have four more regular season games to go. <laughs> Sometimes I wish we had 10 or 15 more games, but we only have four. There's no doubt about that, and we need to win our fair share of the ones we have left. Of those four remaining games, two at the Tucker Center, two on the road, and uh, Coach, there's nothing like playing at home at the Tucker Center. Great crowd on Wednesday night. We need another big crowd Sunday evening when we play the Pittsburgh Panthers. There's no doubt every game from here on out is very important. Uh, we need to get them all if we can, but we got to take them one game at a time. Leonard, I know you don't look at the standings of the score, but you don't want to be counting that. You got to get ready for each game, but there are four teams now with seven wins. They're just a few ahead of us, so we're, we're in the hunt right now. Well, the only thing we can do is take them one game at a time and try to win as many as we can. Good luck against Pittsburgh. That's our show for today. Thanks for joining us. Go Seminoles. We'll see you next week. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. 
Coke Zero Sugar has real Coke taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Try one today. And by SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics.